Hi folks, today I want to play around with a grey shade color palette. So this is a grey, this is just a black, it's a bit of the white, my Artina gold and the Arteza gold. And this is just a bottle of cheap acrylic paint mixed up with my acrylic binder which I'm going to use as a base layer paint. This is just, yeah, pre-mixed. I'm going to pre-mix my colors um, that I always use the same fashion the next week so that I can yeah, just pour out of the bottle and don't have to mix them every time I'm doing a pour. And of course I'm using my little cup tool again and I want to see how pretty this can be, perhaps somewhat marble effect look. We will see. The canvas that we are playing with is a round one today, so this is 50 cm in diameter. And keep your fingers crossed, this is going to become pretty. As usual, I have put some pinboard pins underneath of the canvas to keep it elevated from the surface. And I started out making the base layer paint with the base layer paint bottle. <laughs> I used the palette knife to stretch it around to make it somewhat even and poured the colors into my pouring cup. When I did this the first time, I just used three colors as there are three cups which can hold the colors. But just recently I came across the idea why not putting more than three colors into the three cup tool. Because they can be layered and especially with the gold which I did here as well, I just put them in at the same time to have them split somewhat evenly within the cup. Because the Arteza gold is more on the really gold side and the Artina gold is more on the reddish warmer side of the gold tones. So I hope these both work great together and give some little kind of shading within the gold. Not sure if they show up in the end as split as I think they would do or if they just intermix and form one gold. <laughs> we will see. But bottom line, this is a really muted color palette and I cannot wait to see how this one turns out. And yeah, you will see as well. <laughs> I just started pouring everything onto the canvas and stretching out everything. And as there is not so much more to tell about this technique at this point of the pour, because you probably have seen me doing this over and over again already, I decided to play some music again to keep it calm and chill. And for those who do not want to see the tilting and pouring and just seeing the final result, you can feel free to jump to the end of the video to have a look at the final piece in sunlight. For those of you who are interested in seeing the pouring and tilting, I put in a request to send me some yeah, questions that you want to be answered in one of my coming videos. Because I do not want to tell everything over and over again in each of these pours, especially when there is the same technique. So if you have questions that you would like to have answered about acrylic pouring, about art in general, painting, drawing, whatever you would like to get answered, just let me know and I will make these answers when there are these pouring and tilting scenes where not so much is happening. So yeah, just write me in the comments if you want to have something answered in the next videos and I will make that happen. But for now, enjoy the next steps and we will see you back in the end of the video when there is the final judgment. <laughs>
And as a rare occasion, I'm showing you the red result just before everything dries. I'm sorry about the lighting, it is a bit dark as it's night already when I finished this pour. So it is darker than usual of course and as you have seen just before when I put everything. But you will of course see the finished result in the end with the original colors. But before that I just wanted to also show you again how I varnish my projects because this is a question that occasionally comes up again. And when it comes to varnishing I do not really put too much thought into it. I just let the painting dry. And this painting just dried for one day. So everything was completely set, dry and nice. <laughs> and then I just find it time to varnish it. Some artists prefer to wait for a couple of days or even weeks to put the varnish onto their artwork. I personally never had any issues when I varnish everything just when the paint is dry. And if there is still something for the paint to react to, there is the canvas and the fabric and everything can dry or whatever it does from underneath of the fabric. So I'm personally fine with varnishing everything once everything is set and dry. So for this painting here, as you can see, I again use the Deco Art top coat, which I really, really love. And a sweet friend of mine sent me over from the US because I cannot get it here. I just put the amount that I think I will need onto the artwork and most of times using my fingers to stretch it around and to yeah cover the entire canvas. I also make sure to cover the sides in the early steps just to not forget about them and to make sure everything can flow over the edges if needed. And then it's just basically leveling everything out as good as I can with my fingers. And even if there is some strokes in between, they will dry most of times pretty even and invisible in the end. This is pretty much everything that I do for it. If you don't have access to the top coat, which I would really recommend if you are in the US, it's great. You can also use the Liquitex Ultra Gloss Varnish, which works pretty much the same. It's a bit thinner, so it's a bit more tricky to apply, but it works really great the same way. And here we go. Everything is dry and it dried really, really pretty. I did have some cloud effect going on with the white. Although there was no satin enamel paint in there, it was just happening. And I really, really, really like the end result. I like the muted color range with the gray and the white. And I especially love the gold which pops through every now and then in these super fine lines. I hope the camera can catch it when I tilt it against the sunlight. I think it is just pretty. And although I did so many of these cup tool wing pours already, I really do not get tired about them. I really love that look, I love the design, I love the flow and I hope you don't get bored watching me do them. I will make sure to have some other techniques every now and then as well in my next videos. So please stay with me. And yeah, this is what I got for this result. Let me know in the comments as usual what you think about it, if you liked it, if you have tried it yourself already. I know that a couple of you have made a cup tool and showed me some of the pictures, which is super great. I love to see what you come up with and what your results look like. And if you like this video, as usual, please make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to get in touch with me, you can use my social media links down below in the video description along the materials that I was using, which are all linked down below as well. If you are from Germany, you can use my Amazon links, which are down there. Or if you are from the US or European Union in general, you can use my Arteza affiliate links along with the promotion code, which is MKLGRM1 to get 10% off. It's all listed down below as well. So enough self-promotion, thank you for your time, thank you for watching and other than that, I hope to see you in my next video. <laughs> Have a great day, bye bye.